Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Time for another Metal Earth Kit build. This time another ship. I'm going to put together today the Titanic. I'm sure most people are familiar with the Titanic and what happened to it in history. So I will try to refrain from making any jokes about sinking this build. Wait. Anyhow, let's see what the build is like, how complicated it is, and see if it'll be any fun. Let's open this up, see what's inside. The Titanic, the famous unsinkable ship. Rip this open, and inside we have our two metal sheets, and we have the instructions. And if we open this up, how many instructions do we have? Looks like this is an older style with just a single sheet. The usual layout, the top left quarter with the line drawing, section about folds and tabs, insertion holes, you know those pliers. The legend, the blue circle means to fold the tabs 90 degrees, green triangle means to twist 90 degrees, and then down here we have the layout of the sheets. And this sometimes takes a second to work out. There we are. You've got all the part numbers pointing to all the parts so you can find them on the sheets. And you slide over to the next quarter and start building. One, two, three, part two is here. Actually part one, part two, three, four, that comes together. You slide down to this bottom uh, left quarter and you pick up with five, six, seven, eight, Build these parts and just kind of follow the arrows, arrows, slide over this quarter, continue. Once you're done with the front side, flip it over, back to the top, left quarter, follow the arrows, and this quarter, and down here, and then down here. And then you'll be all done. Tools that I will use in this build. I have my standard set of tools. We have the long needle nose pliers. We have the flat nose pliers. Great for a multitude of bending and twisting and grabbing. We have clippers. I um, absolutely have to have clippers. It helps get the parts off the trees quite easily. I have a set of precision tweezers with one with very pointed end. One has had the pointed end ground down slightly and a flat set. And I have a fairly standard set of tweezers that actually came in one of the Iconics kits that I bought. When it comes to shape and parts, I have an assortment of different things to use. I have dowel rods that I've used for quite some time. A couple of them have had the ends sharpened with a pencil sharpener, which are great for making cone shapes. I have an inexpensive drill bit set with a lot of different sized bits to help with forming cylinder shapes. I also have a couple of step mandrels. I'm not saying you need all of this, but these are different tools that I've acquired and I kind of go back and forth depending on the situation. Something else that's good for shaping. I've got some round nose or ring pliers that have rounded noses on the tip and you can use these to slowly curve different areas wherever you need to, irregular curves, back and forth. These are great for minor little detailed shaping. We've got the instructions and metal sheets. We've got some tools to put it together. Let's get started.
I find myself doing this a lot. In situations where large parts are being held together with bent over tabs and there is not yet much of any other support, I will lightly twist a few tabs just to hold things in place until I can get more of the model assembled. Then I go back and untwist those tabs and bend them over. The little side flaps on the end should probably be folded down first so that the other fold does not get in the way like it did for me. At first I did not understand why parts 10 and 12 had a slight angle to them, then I realized it makes the tower sit at an angle. I decided to bend over the tabs on part 10 to avoid any clearance issues when attaching to part 12. Make sure you put the tops on the stacks, the same for all four. The lines should mostly match up, I think. Use your best judgment, but try to keep them all the same.
all the stacks go angled back. I originally thought the front flap was supposed to bend down, but it kept part 24 and 25 from fitting together correctly. Upon more careful inspections, the instructions do indicate to bend up.
Because of the way the sides of part 23 fold, the tabs can be a little tough to line up. It's going to take some finesse. I decided it would probably be much easier to open the hole back up to get the upper deck in place.
I do edit a lot out to keep the video from being extremely long, but I thought it important to show the process that I went through to join the aft and rudder of the ship. It sped up a little. I bent the ends of the wire that spans the top into sort of hooks. That way I could easily hang it there and then bend the tabs over to secure it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Titanic. All done. Nice and pretty looking. I would like to say that I did notice, and I kind of mentioned this during the edit, that a piece on the front here, there was a flap that originally in the instructions I thought it said to fold down. But later when I put the next piece on, it didn't quite fit. I got looking at it, got to looking at it a little bit more and decided no, this is actually supposed to fold up. Now I did not look online at the time, but later, after the kit was done and I was editing the video, I thought, I'm just going to pop on there and take a look at the kit. And it looks like they did it wrong as well. I say wrong, they flipped it down, because if you go to the instructions online, they differ from the ones that came with my kit, and they do have a clear arrow pointing kind of up in a circle to say flip this up. And I did look at some pictures of the Titanic, and it makes sense that this top piece here has windows and a little bit of a railing whereas the other way the windows were down below and it was just open space so I thought that was very interesting and I do see this sometimes with the metal earth kits where the instructions aren't completely clear so you don't usually see where the person online is clearly or the person who built it and put it online is clearly wrong so that's a little bit amusing I also noticed while I was looking at it if you look at the bottom view inside of one of these frames, there's still a part that they never bothered to clip off. Minor detail, but it amused me. Now this kit seemed easier than the last few I had built. It seemed more straightforward. Things seemed to just fall into place. No overly complicated folds. And very few ridiculously hard to hold on to parts. The bit where you join the aft section of the rudder together was hard to hold on to, but I managed it. With that being the most difficult part of the kit, I'd say it was on the lighter side of moderate. Oh, and the build took about two and a half hours. It was kind of odd also how many parts in this kit just fell into place. That doesn't usually happen. I'm going to stop there. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.